Hey, what's up everybody? Joshua Kaspar back at you with Plugin Boutique and today is another two minute Tuesday where I'm going to show you a tip, trick or technique using a plugin available on Plugin Boutique in under two minutes. Today we're going to be using Pro-Q2 and using the EQ match feature. I'm going to show you how to set it up inside of Ableton Live and then run it so we can make these two chords sound a little bit more similar. So I've got this one which is kind of open and airy. <laughs> And then I've got this one, which is kind of darker and more subdued. And for the sake of argument, let's pretend that I recorded these on a synth and I happened to change the, you know, the settings on the synthesizer and I don't remember what they were, but I need them to be a little bit more similar to be cohesive inside of my project. This is what you can use the Pro Q2's EQ matching feature for. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So the first thing is my Pro Q2 is on the more subdued one because I want the subdued one to sound more like the airy one, okay? So this is the Pro Q2. It's on that sound. What I want to do is route the audio from this airy one into the Pro Q2 so it can analyze it. And the way to do that in Ableton Live is right here where it says exit out. We want to go to two, which is the subdued pad there. And then if you click down the second one, the stereo sidechain filter for Pro Q2. That's exactly where we want that audio to go. <laughs> You'll see now when I play it, you actually don't hear it because it's getting fed into here just to be able to analyze that information. Next thing, come down here, it says pre-post in the analyzer, and there's an EQ match right here. Go ahead and click that. And then what you want to do is from the reference, come down and choose sidechain. And now I'm going to go ahead and let the audio play for a little bit until the actual EQ curve kind of settles down to something. <laughs> Now that it looks good, I'm going to go ahead and click match. We can go up to 24 different points, which is going to give us a really sculpted EQ curve, but I don't want that. I actually want to come down and do it fairly, uh, something like five looks good to me. I'm going to go ahead and click finish. And now we have some decisions to make. What's really changing the sound to make it sound a little bit more like the other one? For instance, this one right here probably isn't a good idea to keep because it's going to be messing with the actual harmonics of the, the sound and not just how it sounds, the timbre. So I'm going to go ahead and click that, and we can bypass it just to make sure, you know, it isn't something we actually need. <laughs> So I don't think it's something we need. Maybe we'll leave it there and come back if we need to re-engage it and turn it down. Uh, and then we can come over here. You can see some of these are really, really high, and I think that might be a little bit too much. So if I zoom out here by clicking 30 dB, we can actually select both of those and roll back on the gain, just so it's it's still giving that, that frequency range a boost, but not by nearly as much. <laughs> So it does have the airier sound, and I think it sounds pretty good. If we come back up to the original and go back to exit out, and then go ahead and listen. You know, if we want to go even further, we can come in and add a point here and do a low cut, and just to roll off some of the rumbly bits, maybe change the slope here a little bit steeper. So that actually is working there. So if I roll it back, it's gonna be adding that kind of tone from the original or the area version to this one too. And I think it will be more cohesive if we leave it. Maybe come here and boost this a little bit more. And 
And by the way, holding shift and moving any of these is going to give you kind of the micro movement so you can make a little bit more of a better decision or a more precise uh, placement of your frequency node. But I think that sounds a lot better. Obviously, it's not going to completely transform the sound into the other one, but it's getting it closer. So as I make the transition from one to the other inside of a project, it's not jarring or as jarring it as it would have been if I didn't have this EQ Learn feature. So that's it. That's how you use the EQ Learn feature in Pro Q2 inside of Ableton Live. You got the routing down, you got the analyzation down, and now you know how to go in and manipulate it to make it sound better than just leaving it as the default selection that the Pro Q2 has made. Anyway, I hope you learned something. Definitely check out Pro Q2 now. Links in the video description. I'm Joshua Casper here for Plugin Boutique, and I'll see you in the next video.